Okay, we had a little bit more than five minutes, but uh, I think we needed it. So anyway, we're uh, doing real good on time, and uh, I'll, but I would like to uh, uh, keep things moving along. Um, uh, we've got a couple. Okay, okay, we we can go ahead and get going. So let's uh, let's move on to uh, agenda item 19, heritage regulations and policies. Uh, Deputy Director Patrick Cates for possible action. The Nevada Department of Wildlife will present the status of. Heritage program regulations and policies, and make recommendations for possible changes for the commission's consideration. Uh, <coughs> Deputy Director Cates, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you should have in your packet uh, an outline uh, that I'll go through, as well as the current heritage regulations and some proposed uh, changes to those regulations. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, I think most people are familiar with the heritage program, but. Um, the regulations governing uh, the program, uh, the establishment of the Heritage Trust account is in NRS 501.3575. Um, that establishes the account. All the revenue that comes into that account uh, is generated from heritage tags, PIW tags, and Silver State tags, uh, as well as any gifts that are made uh, directly to the commission, um, which is separate and apart from uh, the department's gift fund. Um, the expenditures out of that account are based on a formula and statute. It's based on 75% of those revenues collected in the prior year, plus the interest. Um, last year, we had about $400,000 to distribute. Uh, this year, uh, collections have gone up by about a quarter million dollars. We should have about $550,000 to distribute uh, this next year. Uh, most of that increase was due to the uh, the Silver State uh, tag, uh, that, like I said, that generated about a quarter million dollars for us last year. So that, that was great. Um, the uh, program expenditures uh, are governed by uh, NAC 501.300 through 340, uh, and all that's included in your packet. Um, it defines the form of the application for applicants to submit money for projects. Um, it defines the process for endow review and making regulation, uh, recommendations to the commission, um, provides some guidelines to prioritize uh, projects for the commission, um, and describes uh, endow's administrative duties in, in, in managing that, that, that program, as well as the duties of the recipients who receive uh, a heritage awards. Um, the timeline for the heritage program, um, November 1st, applications are available to the public. Uh, our applications are on our website. Uh, the application period runs from January 1 through March 1st. So March 1st is the deadline to submit to the department any heritage program applications. Um, uh, April 15th, uh, NDAO, uh reviews the projects and makes recommendations to the commission. Uh, that goes to actually the uh, heritage committee uh, as defined in NAC, uh, who then reviews those uh, projects and then makes formal recommendations to the commission. Uh, that Those recommendations are to be made uh, from the committee to the commission by April 30th. Um, and then, of course, the following commission meeting, uh, the commission uh, uh, votes on them and selects the projects. Uh, Post-July 1, we enter into contracts with the, um, uh, the people who uh, received awards. Um, June 30 of the following year is when those projects have to be done, so they're, the award is for one year. And um, the Commission does have authority under NAC to extend those projects, to extend funding for them if the project proponent comes forward and asks for an extension. Um, and then lastly, the, the following September 30th after the, after the deadline is, is the uh, project proponent's deadline to submit their completion reports. So that's kind of the, the status um, of the process. And there's a couple of things that uh, we're interested in, in changing uh, in the NACs. Uh, the first one is really that, that the amount of funds that are available. Uh, the statute, uh, as I referenced, uh, uh, is based on the 75% of the prior year's revenue plus interest. Um, in the current NAC, the only way, if money is not, if that if that 75% plus interest doesn't get spent in that year, in the current NAC, the only way that money can be extended forward 
is extending that specific project the proponent comes forward that's the only way to do that if the money goes unspent otherwise it goes back into the heritage pot um, into the reserve and the reserve is uh, over six million dollars now and growing I mean by design 25 percent of each revenue goes into that reserve and isn't touched well in addition to that we're reverting m money back into the reserve that can never be touched again um, and uh, you know I was trying to find before this meeting a while ago we, we estimated what that was and over time it's a pretty substantial amount of money that's uh, uh, not getting out there for projects a lot of reasons for that things don't end up costing as much as they thought or maybe some faster the project uh, uh, didn't get off the ground um, I know uh, one of the things that is uh, uh, typically funded out of heritage is the trap and transplant program it's a big broad program sometimes conditions change weather changes you know sometimes some of those things don't don't quite uh, uh, happen the way they're planned and um, that's one reason that that money can end up being reverted um, I believe that there's enough authority I mean the, the way the NRS is worded it's pretty pretty specific that that 75 percent formula is the amount of money available to expend every year uh, but we already have authority in NAC to extend that um, so what I want to do is put some language in there that makes it very clear that any money from prior years that didn't get spent on projects can then be reallocated by the Commission in a subsequent year so that money doesn't go to waste um, <clears throat> The other item that uh, uh, we're interested in uh, addressing is uh, contracts. Uh, as I said, we currently contract with uh, uh, people who receive awards uh, in order for them to implement their projects. Uh, we have been implementing a subgrant process for many of our programs uh, in lieu of a contract. Uh, does not require board of examiners approval. We have a template uh, subgrant. Um, uh, policies and forms um, it allows a lot more flexibility uh, we can address we can avoid some issues that we get into with uh, a standard state contract uh, you know various insurance requirements that sort of thing this really is has the look and feel of a subgrant process so we're really interested in in changing the NAC to allow that as well um, we do need to develop some some policies and guidelines for subgrants. Like I say, we already have templates. It's just a matter of customizing them for the heritage program. Um, one thing that we uh, cannot change during this period, in my opinion, uh, would be the um, the application process itself, uh, because we're kind of already in that period. Um, the format of the applications are already out there. Uh, you know, we, we did have issues in the past with uh, uh, whether or not applications conformed to the NAC in terms of the format. Um, you know, that was a, a, an issue of contention, and I know I went through and, and did a review of those, those projects, I guess that was a year before last, as to whether or not they met all the requirements for application in NAC. Uh, we subsequently changed our procedures in the application. Uh, that's not an NAC or an NRS. It's just a it's just the forms that we put out on the website we went through last year and changed all that to make sure it was hitting every criteria that was named in NAC so I think we've covered that uh, certainly if there's a desire to change that process in any way we could certainly do so but it would have to be in the next in the next cycle um, in the packet as I said I have some proposed language uh, that we put out there um, looking at the regulatory document that looks thusly the last couple of pages have the changes you can see in uh, NAC 501.330 uh, we want to add some language about this is where it goes through the 75 percent calculation and just add a line that says and any balance of project funds from prior years available for redistribution uh, NAC 501340 uh, subsection 1a uh, we want to remove reference to uh, completing a contract for services. This is for people who uh, have the re re awards and change that to enter into a subgrant agreement as prescribed by the department. And then lastly, uh, adding a section to, to that NAC about fund redistribution, just a little bit more specifics. If upon re a completion of a project, awarded funds are not used for those projects, those funds are available for redistribution. Um, 
Uh, two, if a person who is responsible for managing or supervising a project fails to meet any requirement of NAC 501340, subsection 1, the Commission may cancel funding for the project and disqualify those projects for any future funding. That's a existing language in NAC that is simply moved down there to make it uh, fit better with these proposed changes. Um, and then uh, number three, any, any funds unused as a result of subsection one or two may be redistributed to the com by the commission in a subsequent award year. Um, <clears throat> those are really the changes that, that I'm seeking. These aren't formal regulations yet. Wanted to throw it out there for the commission's consideration. Uh, see if you want to bring uh, want us to bring back some formal regulatory changes uh, at the February meeting, um, and, and if you would like, uh, you know, a, a committee to consider this prior prior to that. That's that's what we're looking for. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Chairman, can, uh, go ahead, Ken, Ken Mayor. For the record, the other thing that we've been talking about, I'm not sure where to capture this, but to have a retention, because the way this is set up currently is that a a contractor could bill for all the money in a project and not deliver the final product and in most contracting you have a retention of 10 percent or 15 percent that you hold back till you get the final product in your hand which makes sense so we'll we'll bring something like that forward whether it'll be administratively or through nac I, i'm i'm glad the director mentioned that i i uh, forgot to mention that uh, we did consider some um policy changes last March, I guess it was, uh, that the committee, I think it was the policy committee at that time, uh, were looking at and holdbacks were one of those issues. I think um, a commission policy is probably a good place to address that. Um, and if you wanted to refer this to a committee, that's something we could work on with them. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll bring it to the commission and uh, uh, Who's first? <laughs> it uh, Commissioner well, Commissioner Rain, go ahead. Thank you. Um, one thing I don't know if, don't know if our uh, three newer and somewhat old, older commissioners um, uh, aware of is we had a um, some meetings here um, well about this time last year and then we we're contemplating some changes in February of this year that were made to these NACs and they were basically drafted by our um, Dag Stockton and. I'll just point out just a couple of the most obvious ones. I was looking for a copy of it, and I don't have it. But like, for instance, NIC 501-300, you go to 2, 2B. A map shows the location of the project. And as was pointed out in a particular lawsuit and whatnot, and you know, came back to us from a judgment, hey, OK, where does the electro fishing boat? Show me the map with the, with the North Arrow. Show me the. Um, site for planned development. Some of these things says ir if relevant, and basically he went through and delineated all these inconsistencies in it, and we have that as a matter of a record, and that should be used. I mean, at least the vast majority of the changes that he proposed, they just make plain simple sense. You don't need a map for the electro fishing boat or the uh, transportation trailer. You don't need. You know a lot of these things for any particular item. Some things you do, some things you don't. But these, you know, you can't do it. You cannot follow this NAC strictly, and that was pointed out to us uh, rather strictly by a judge. You cannot follow it as it's currently written. So it would, by possibly, it could ex <coughs> directly exclude many projects if, if you can't meet every single line of it. And basically, is my general understanding of the judgment was is in favor of it of the commission but fix your problem because your NAC is broken don't come back to me again or you can have more issue you can have an issue you need to be fixing your problem and they basically the reason that did not get uh, or those portions of this NAC did not get fixed was the executive order that uh, delayed everything and it, I don't think anything there was particularly that controversial as far as that goes, most of those points. And we should definitely bring up that graph and present that with anything we do. And at least for everybody to look at, for sure, again. A lot of work was done. Commissioner yeah. McNinch? I'm just trying to absorb a little bit of what Oh, Randy sorry. That's <laughs> can, okay. Um, could, could, could I respond to that? Oh, go ahead. Um, sorry. Um, I think Commissioner Rain raises a lot of good valid points. Um, it, as I mentioned uh, just a minute ago, that, that really relates to the application process itself. 
I think we are too far into the current year cycle to be able to change that. You'd be changing rules on people midstream. Um, the definitions for an application are pretty narrow. The issues like having a map and everything don't necessarily fit every project. I think we took an interim step to address the concerns that were raised by the judge last year by changing the forms themselves to make sure that every project proponent was at least hitting every single item that was defined in NAC. Now, you know, in terms of a map, um, you know, they had to do a little bit of a little bit of a dance there if they weren't doing a habitat project and how they addressed that. But we at least made sure that as an applicant they were addressing every one of those. Whereas in the past we had not done that. And I think that's where, where, where we really got sideways. I agree a lot of the um, um, uh, language that uh, Dag Stockton came up with uh, is valid and good. And I think that's worth looking at. Um, in, in my opinion, it would have to be done in the next uh, year's cycle of the project. But it is something that, that needs to be looked at, I think. And just as a follow-up, maybe throw this out to the DAGs for comment, um, is that you know, do we do, do it now with a deferred effective date on that portion of the regulation uh, or just defer it uh, you know, to the Heritage Committee or whatever committee would deal with it uh, for uh, getting something done before the next, uh, the next Heritage Project cycle uh, begins, which would be uh, the 2000. Uh, 12, 13 cycle, I guess, is the best way to put it. So, because I know that <clears throat> in both statutes and regulations, you can have deferred effective dates. In other words, we can go ahead and deal with it now, but we just say that it's not effective until, you know, uh, you know November 1st of, you know, 2012, um, the next next application cycle. Um, so that that's uh, that's an option. But uh, I think uh, uh, Commissioner Rain's you know, comments are valid, and that we probably need to get that cleaned up. Uh, and uh, so, in my mind, the, the question is just how do, when do we do it and how do we do it? And, you know, do we want to do that now or do we want to uh, have a little bit more time <clears throat> to think about that and, and just uh, have it as a separate project? Uh, so, anyway, I just throw it out to everybody to think about. Uh, any other? Uh, go ahead, yeah, Com so Commissioner McNinch. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, the question I had was uh, in what, what is proposed here at least, uh, would the concept of um, maintaining a retention? be covered under the concept of the subgrant um, agreement that's being presented is it would it be covered under that or the I, I'm sorry I missed the that's beginning right. part of your so so there's a concept of having a retention for making sure that the pot projects get completed that we get delivery is that is that concept covered under the subcontract proposal that's being put in here if you include concept of a subgrant yeah it, it would retention be part of that uh, it, it could be covered in the subgrant uh, procedures themselves, or in a policy that references subgranting. Uh, yeah, it's kind of part of that. All right. So that was that was one question, just as a thought. Um, we have uh, under three in this. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. But uh, the proposal to uh, if a person who is responsible for managing or supervising a project fails to meet um, any requirement or subsection. Uh, Subsection one, wouldn't you include or fails to get an extension pursuant to subsection two under that? Um, sure, that 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 might work. I'm just throwing that out. Sure. A suggestion to sure. Keep things tied in. Yeah. So. <coughs> Commissioner Hall. Here, here recently we, we had an article in the paper from the legislature uh, committee that uh, they were contemplating or looking at the possibility of eliminating up to 35 boards and commissions. And uh, my question is, uh, right now we have over $6 million in that account, and it's growing, and, and we're putting 25% back in there every year and the interest uh, at the present time is what one percent maybe yeah one and a half at pretty max pretty nominal yeah yeah so we're not getting a a big bang for our buck on interest um, I was on the committee last year and uh, uh, I had several suggestions about raising the 75 percent to 90 percent using 90 percent of it uh, Six million dollars. I don't know how far you want to go with 
building this thing, but if if the uh, the board was suddenly dissolved, what happens to the six million? The legislature grabs it. I mean, it, it was told to me before that they can't get it, but I don't believe that. They can, they can do something. That probably is going a little bit beyond this agenda item, um, that question. Uh, uh, well, uh, I, I actually had in, in, in the material uh, uh, addressing uh, changes at the next legislature, uh, what Commissioner Howell proposed about changing the percentages. That's an NRS. It would have to be changed by an act of the legislature. Right. Um, it, it, in terms of them uh, taking the money, uh, of course, the legislature has wide powers and who knows what they're capable of. But in this case, they've looked at that before. And there are state laws and, more importantly, federal laws that would prohibit them from doing that. Um, and when they tried to look at that during a special session, uh, we got a letter from the feds telling them that uh, they couldn't take what is sportsman dollars and divert it to another purpose. They could change state law, but they can't change federal law. And the federal law is very clear. And they backed off once they saw that. I mean, the LCB staffers and the budget office looked at that and, and told the legislatures, no, you can't, you can't touch this money. I would assume if, God forbid, they should eliminate the commission that that money, they'd have to change the law to roll that money into the department's authority or something. They couldn't just sweep it and take it elsewhere. At the present time, we don't have any mechanism to access th that six million. Uh, no, and uh, one of the ideas that were was kicked around previously was getting some uh, legislative change, not only related to the seventy-five percent, but allowing some mechanism with commission approval to tap into that reserve. Currently, there is none, but that would have to be a subject for um, uh, you know bill consideration for the next legislature, a worthy topic, but probably beyond what we're trying to look at here. Yeah. Okay, uh, any other uh, commission comment? This. Okay, this is, a, this is an action item, so uh, if there's no further uh, commission comment, I'll uh, go ahead and throw this out to the public for public comment. Uh, any, uh, any public comment on this particular agenda item? Uh, come on up. John Reed, Washoe Cab, and uh, we voted unanimously in favor of your proposal. But uh, as this last conversation has pointed out, we wanted to take it two steps farther and uh, try to encourage you to do whatever it is that we do have to do to make the legislature work. We'd like to, the uh, amount that we can use raised up to at least 80%. And we also want to have some mechanism for digging into the six million bucks that's losing money by inflation right now. Uh, and I think if you can do it in a way that gives more discretion uh, to how we can do that, we can hit projects when we need it and with the amount of money that they and attention that they deserve at the right time. Okay, thanks. Uh, Bill, come on up. Well, Belding, Washoe County, represent myself. First, I have a question through the floor. To Mr. Cates, um, did you say there was 550,000 available this year, including the Silver State money? Uh, approximately, yes. Uh, why is that so low? In the past, we've had it was without the Silver State, we've had 400. Did the, the one was, sheep tag? I know we we the commission, the prior commission, got rid of one sheep tag. We probably lost 100 100,000 there. Where did the rest of it fall to? We've had 550,000 several times without it, the Silver State tag. It, it, it's been declining. Um, it hasn't been 500,000 for a couple of years. It was 400,000 last year. It was 440 year. summer, 460 last year. It was 643 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it, but maybe there, maybe we need to get that one sheep tag back. There, there's, a, there's a report uh, from, uh, it, it's on the website. It's, uh, not sure, it was meeting at, before last, I think. It has la the end of the year gift account on it. Uh, and you can look at the at each of the years and see, yeah, yeah. you know, I, and see where the variation. I have a pretty is. good memory. I keep pretty close tabs on it. I, I want to make a comment now. Uh, um, without question, there's there's one measurable uh, item that that we do as sportsmen in the Department of Wildlife, and that's trap and transplant. And uh, we can look at all the habitat projects that I've done, that everybody in this room has done, and. Uh, 
You can throw those all in a bag and I'll guarantee you it has not brought the wildlife that the trap and transplant program has brought to this state. And for the past four, three or four years, we've seen trap and transplant ask for money and it got knocked down 30, 40, 50 percent. And I certainly hope that doesn't happen this year. This is something that that committee needs to, to take a look at. And I, I think we need language put in to the heritage program that, and I got to commend, I know he's not here, but Mike Cox and, and, the, and the biologist, he doesn't ask for much. He should, and I, I've said for years, he should ask for more. What he asked for is very reasonable. And the past three years has been knocked down, like I say, 30, 40, 50 percent. And I hope that doesn't happen this year, and I trust that it won't. But uh, maybe we need some language to say that trap and transplant will be covered to a certain percentage of, of the available monies. I hope we don't have to go that far, but I think it's certainly looked upon differently about trap and transplant. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Dr. Moldy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Don Moldy, just a quick question. I think the answer is no, but is there any way to give money to the department that's tax deductible? Yes. Yes. There is. How do you do that? Write a check. Yes. You mean that money I gave you a year or two ago I should have deducted? Yes. That's Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. And the cost of the donuts, probably. That was a thousand bucks I could have. Oh, shoot. <laughs> you can amend your tax return. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> if it's within the statute of limitation, you can amend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, refer you might your get audited, but you, you can amend. Uh, uh, Dr. Dixon. Uh, Paul Dixon, for the record, and as noted in my uh, action report, we did not, we're not able to cop copy this topic in public, so I'll be speaking on behalf of myself. Uh, since I was the individual who raised the lawsuit, and I will agree with Commissioner Raines, it was to get formality that we followed the processes that we have lined out. I didn't say that they were perfect, it's just we weren't following them. And there are times when you don't follow them and everybody agrees, well, we got a good outcome. And there are times when you don't follow them and you get a bad outcome. So you, you need to follow the process. And I would agree we need to have a process that is fair and equitable and one that everybody can follow that, that we do that with. I'm not. And, and we, we've discussed this as a, as a county advisory board in the past. I don't think any of the public are against being able to access, because I worked with Commissioner Capurro for a while on some of the language of accessing some of the funds that are currently unaccessible. Um, I don't think anybody's against that. But again, I think that leaving it with the word at the discretion, the discretion of a commission that has one viewpoint may be that we want to use this money for doing things that the cabs and a whole bunch of other people be happy with the viewpoints and discretion of a commission that has other agendas out there may be using money where the cabs and the sportsmen aren't as happy with that. So I think just having the word discretion in there worries me. And I think we need to put a little bit of boundaries on what that is. And you know, whether it's capital equipment for helicopters or things that are important, but to say that you're going to take four million of the six million dollars and, and, and put it towards predator control, I don't think you'd make sportsmen, public, and a lot of other people happy, but there may there was a time and there may be a time in the future when a commission would vote to do that and I don't think we would want to have inadvertently set up something to allow that to happen is my only point. But I, I couldn't agree more with Commissioner Rain that we have to have a process and everybody has to be able to follow it. Even if the process is broken, we need to identify where it's broken and at least document that it was broken. We weren't even doing that. So thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, any additional public comment? Okay, seeing that, I'll go ahead and bring it back uh, to the commission. Um, any comment from the commission or uh, based on what we've heard from the public? Uh, I could uh, probably answer. I don't know. I didn't think I heard Patrick answer it when he asked, uh, Mel Belding asked about the difference in the funds. A lot of it had to do with the interest we were getting at the time years ago. That's where a lot of it was. Is that correct, Patrick, or not? Uh, yeah, we certainly used to get more interest in years past. Okay. Well, um, I guess um, at this point I'm looking for, uh, and this is a uh, possible action item, and so I'm looking for uh, um, some kind of a motion. Um, sounds like uh, um, what we should do is uh, authorize the uh, uh, department to move forward on drafting uh, uh, formal regulations uh, for, uh, would it be February? Yes, February. Okay, for February, uh, so we can get, get things done uh, in time for, uh, you know, this upcoming uh, 
with, with with the caveat that we'll <laughs> identify whether or not we can do everything at once and defer. I'd almost, and, and let's discuss that. I, I, after thinking about that, I would almost rather have that process uh, not get rushed. In other words, let's just focus, uh, and this, this is my comment, uh, let's focus on exactly what um, Patrick has laid out in, in, the, in, in this uh, uh, proposal today. And, um, and then as part of maybe the motion uh, direct um, that uh, the committee, um, you know, maybe the Heritage Committee, uh, can consider doing the changes, you know, for the November 1st, uh, uh, 2012 cycle, um, and uh, and then that way we have a, we have the rest of the year, you know, I mean, a good part of 2012 to really delve into that application process and make sure we got uh, everybody's comments and and get that all cleaned up and everybody's happy with it. That, that would be, be my way to do. It. Uh, Tim, uh, Commissioner Rain. Thank you. Um, you know, we've we've kind of had the discussion about you know before and been almost admonished. I know by legal staff sometimes about you know changing regulations too often because it's an expensive, time-consuming process. Not only commission time, but DAG time, LCB time, and you know if we're going to change these NACs, and we should change these NACs. However, it comes you know they come out one time-consuming. A very expensive operation is a good thing. Two, I mean, doing one and with knowing we're going to go ahead and do it again, that's crazy. Mo mo physically, from what I was understanding, you know, let's, let's get it done. Huh. And I don't see any, you know, yes, there's some nice changes, but let's do them once, inclu include, all, include all the stuff we want in it, and uh, move on. Vice Chairman Rob. Understanding what Commissioner Rain said, my biggest concern of going forward right now and getting it going forward right now is if you foresee any monies coming back. I don't want to lose out. I think that's why we're doing it two pronged here. Do you foresee money coming back? If you foresee money coming back, I want to split it into two to capture that money and then change the regulation for the application period next year. You're uh, <laughs> I, I would I would concur with that. Um, I don't. It's too early to tell if money's going to come back or not. But every year there's always money that comes back, and in, in the, I, I think trying to do the application piece at the same time could potentially create some confusion for people who are applying, um, and it also may help, particularly the the new commissioners, to go through a cycle and look at the applications in this current period and see how well the current process matches the applications that we get. Um, yeah, it would be more efficient just to kind of go through it all at once, but I would be uh, concerned that we might get hung up on some of those other issues and not be able to address the, the financial piece and the money uh, reverting. Um, and, and, and we don't need to do that piece yet. I, I, I would concur with the chairman on, on the approach on that. Can you give me some idea what type of money has been returned over the past couple of years? Uh, I'm I, not going to hold I, you to I knew it. somebody I was going to ask that, and I have been looking for that. We calculated that last year, and I can't for the life of me remember off the top of my head how much it is. I'll be happy to provide that. I mean, it's it's six figures over a period of several years. It's it's extensive, but I I can't for the life of me uh, remember the exact number, but I'll find it. I've been looking for it for two days. <laughs> but knowing that we are giving money up that we currently cannot access without making this change, and I do not want to continue yep. giving money up. Okay. Any other? Uh, uh, one question. Quick question. Sure. Uh, what are we at with this uh, executive order? Are, are we still under yeah. that umbrella? We, we, we are still under the executive order. Um, that, that is a hurdle we'll have to cross. Um, I think once we've got something a little more solid with the committee input, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, take a run at that. My, my sense is, is that uh, we can pass that hurdle, particularly on the basis of doing uh, the subgranting process. We're really uh, streamlining the process not making it more complicated. So I'm, I'm pretty confident in what I'm looking at trying to do here that, that we can uh, um, meet those uh, expectations under the executive order. Personal opinion, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it. 
Okay, good question. And, and I believe the executive order does um, sunset. So we'll be hearing more from the governor's office. What What is the sunset? I think it's January 1st. We're looking now. But oh, I, I okay. Think it's, it's a one year and it was enacted on the 3rd of January. Okay. Uh, any other uh, commission comments? Okay, uh, I guess I'm looking for uh, a motion then uh, with regard to uh, these uh, proposed heritage regulations. Anybody? <laughs> Take a stab at it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> Commissioner McNinch, thank All you. Right. Um, I would make a motion that we, uh, we uh, direct staff to move forward with the uh, regulations, uh, modifications to the heritage program regs as proposed in item number 19 with the additional caveat that we will consider um, the additional changes to the process, the application process, the information that's provided uh, in the next several months as we move forward closer to the next uh, cycle by November 1st. Is that yeah, sounds good. Second. Okay, I have a motion a second. Uh, any uh, comments, uh, commission comments for, uh, with regard to the motion? I, I just, uh, okay. for clarity, I don't know if it's necessary. Do we have to make any reference to having a committee look at this prior to the meeting? I, I don't know if that's necessary or not for the motion. But. Um, I would say that um, that um, when we do uh, the committee, we can uh, we can give that charge to the committee at that time. I I don't know if it's necessary, you know, to uh, to actually do it as part of the motion. But uh, any, any comments on that? Yeah, I think we're okay. Okay, um, any uh, other comments? Okay, seeing none, then I'll go ahead and call for uh, a vote on, the, on this motion. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Uh, Commissioner Vogler? Aye. Okay, uh, passes eight to one uh, with uh, Commissioner Rain the uh, dissenting vote. And I think he really wanted the whole regulation dealt with this, what his opposition yeah. is. Okay. The whole regulation dealt with once. Save okay. time, save money. Um, okay, great. Um,